The following is a special presentation of Conifer Radio, our continuing series of Conifer Podcast. Conifer Podcast presents the true life stories of our U.S. Highway 285 corridor and Evergreen residents, their remarkable contributions to our community, and their encouragement to us all. We continue this week with Ms. Carrie Jagger and Ms. Betsy Hayes of Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice in a Conifer Podcast recording from February 8th of 2021. Conifer Radio offers its support and gratitude to Carrie and Betsy for their continuing contributions to the health and well-being of our mountain communities. Hello, Conifer and Bailey in our U.S. 285 corridor and evergreen communities, and welcome to another feature of Conifer Podcast. We're here live and direct in mobile studio with Carrie Yeager and Betsy Hayes of Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice. Carrie serves as president and CEO, and Nancy as director of resource development for one of our special mountain area nonprofit organizations. Welcome, Carrie and Betsy, to Conifer Podcast. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. We're excited to be here. Well, as many of our listeners are very well versed and likely have heard of Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice, let's have both of you kick things off by introducing the organization and its story. Sure. Well, thank you. Um, Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice is an independent nonprofit health care agency and we care for the mountain communities in the Colorado Foothills area since 1980. So it's our 40th birthday anniversary this year, and we're excited to share that with folks. Um, and we all started back in 1979 when Carol Linke, who was a resident of Evergreen, recognized the hospice movement at that time and her intent to help terminally ill patients die at home. And so when a local resident needed hospice care, she held a meeting right down the road at Evergreen Lutheran Church and Mount Evans Hospice was born with a, basically underneath a volunteer organization. So along the years, we added home health care, palliative care and various counseling and support services to provide in-home comprehensive care to the community. So it's been an evolving practice over 40 years and really identifying what the community needs are and then figuring out how do we best serve those um, since we're all locals as well. And so overall, we serve Park County, West Jefferson County, Clear Creek, and to the North Gilpin. And so it covers the 3,500 square mile area. And essentially we are serving folks in their homes from the Continental Divide all the way through the foothills of Colorado. Well, let's continue, Carrie, with your story, your particular personal story, and a little about you and what prompted you to take on the challenge of leading the Mount Evans organization. Sure. So I am actually a Wisconsin native, and after spending many seasons out here skiing and hiking and, and spending wonderful time in the mountains, my husband and I re relocated to Idaho Springs in 2006. And so when I look back at my journey, when I was in nursing school, I worked as a volunteer in an inpatient hospice house that was close to my home. And that was my first experience with hospice. And I was very honored to care for patients and families during their end of life care. And so after graduating from nursing school, I actually specialized in caring for people with traumatic brain injuries and spinal cord injuries. And I love to get to know those patients and their families and focusing on rehab and community integration. So it was kind of a nice fit between learning rehabilitation and hospice through my nursing career. And along that journey, then I added a business degree to my education. And I knew in order to build successful programs that were high quality and financially sustainable, I would need a strong grasp on the business side to complement my clinical expertise. So I began building after receiving my business degree, building programs, working with hospital systems and some end of life care organizations down in Denver. And then in 2014, my mom who resided actually next door to us at Life Care Center of Evergreen elected hospice. And Mount Evans was the obvious choice as their leaders in quality care in the foothills. And she received excellent care and love from her team. And I, I really enjoyed meeting some of those folks who are still with us today. And so a few years later, when Mount Evans called about a management position, I knew it was an opportunity to be part of an incredible organization. So I joined Mount Evans in 2017 as their senior director of clinical services and then honored when the board of directors offered me the position to serve as president and CEO in 2020. Well, thank you, Carrie. And Betsy, 
Ms. Hayes, the same question to you. Tell us a little about your story and the challenges of taking on the important role of developing the fundraising efforts for Mount Evans. Will do, and thank you, Mark. Uh, my story is a little bit different. Uh, I moved out here to Colorado back in 1995, and my first house was on Paul's Drive in Conifer, way up at 10,000 feet. And I had views of Mount Evans, Rosalie, that whole range right from every window in my house. And it was awesome um, because I was working in downtown Denver doing marketing and advertising for AT&T. And that was my home and vacation home. And I just loved that place. Um, but my husband and I then ended up having three kids in four years. And we decided we needed to move down a little bit closer. So we moved um, off the mountain down into Evergreen and ever since I've been really involved in our community with all kinds of things, you know, kid related, scouts, sports, PTA, school, uh, really just working with everyone for the benefit of our kids. Then I uh, went to work for Mount, uh, Mountain Area Land Trust or MALT. And my job there was fundraising and events to raise money to be able to save the land, save these beautiful views that we have in our mountain community. This is why we live here. It doesn't happen by magic, but it sure is awesome. And that was a great job to have. Uh, then I moved over and started working with the Evergreen Chamber of Commerce, where I worked up until uh, September of just this past year, 2020. And so I've been the president of the Evergreen Chamber for the last six years. And it has been my honor to help the businesses grow and prosper and connect with each other, both in Evergreen and across our mountain community. We have strong partnerships with the Conifer Chamber, Platte Canyon Chamber, and it was great. And then COVID hit. And so I, um, over these past months uh, during the global pandemic, then my role became not just to help businesses prosper, but how to help them survive in a global pandemic in a situation that we just could not control. And it was an amazing journey. And I enjoyed helping those businesses. And, you know, my heart is in this community. Then this job at Mount Evans came up to do the fundraising and advertising to help our community and our residents. And it just felt like the right next step. So I moved over here October 1st um, and started working for Mount Evans. It's such an honor to be able to raise money in our community to make sure that people across this whole mountain area can get the in-home health care they need, whether it's end of life service or you have a wound that needs to be taken care of or you need physical therapy in your home, the Mount Evans clinical team, nursing staff, they're the ones that come to you. And regardless of the ability to pay, to be able to raise money for an organization like that, that supports anyone and everyone across the mountain community, I could not say no to that job. And I've been really enjoying it. And um, Mount Evans has been here, as Carrie said, for 40 years doing this service up and down the 285 corridor, across Conifer to Evergreen, and then, of course, up and down I-70. It's just amazing. The staff travels all over the place, and our kind of tagline is, our heart is in the home. That tells you right there. It's all about the heart of our care team takes care of all of us when we need it whether we need it tomorrow or next week or 10 years from now, Mount Evans is going to be here for all of us, our neighbors, our family, our friends. It's just an amazing organization. I'm honored to be a part of it. Well, Betsy, that's a great segue into our next question. And that is for the benefit of our listeners, just how Mount Evans serves the mountain communities up here and the methodologies by which uh, you do what you do so well. Well, I don't know if it's really the methodologies. I mean, I think Carrie can really speak to that on, you know, how does this happen? I mean, is it yes. just to get a phone call and we get out there? It's a lot more complicated than that because this is healthcare in our community. We don't have any urgent cares. We aren't, don't have a hospital anywhere near us. And in-home is what it's all going to be about going into the future, especially because of COVID. In terms of like, how does it really happen? Carrie, do you want to answer that one? Sure. So, you know, basically 
we provide in-home care, whether that's hospice, palliative care, home health care, our emotional support services, all in the home. And those are driven by um, usually a physician or a doctor's order um, who provide us the direction on what they would like from a care delivery standpoint in the home. And so our clinicians travel all over the landscape um, to walk into people's homes and provide the care that's needed. And just a fun fact is last year, we drove more than 307,000 miles providing patient care across this four county region. Um, and so absolutely, our clinicians are doing that in all wheel or four wheel drive vehicles. And they provide um, great care and, and love and support, like Betsy was remarking earlier, as our heart is in the home, absolutely taking care of people that they know best um, because it's usually their neighbors or friends that they know because most of our clinicians live up in the area that they provide care. So it's a really unique setting um, for our clinicians and to be able to care for residents in their home is unmatched. Mark, something else that's really important for people to know is, as I mentioned earlier, we all are living through a historical time of a global pandemic. Well, the Mount Evans care team did not stop for one single day during COVID. We kept continuing to give care to people in their homes day after day. It became a little bit more complex because, you know, picture this, a nurse drives up to the house, they have to go to the back of their car, don full PPE, gloves, gowns, et cetera, go in, take care of the patient, come back out, take off those clothes and put them in one bag, drive to the next patient, put on an entirely new outfit and go in and take care of patient number two. And they were doing this over and over again throughout COVID. As I said, we haven't stopped. The team is just an amazing group of people that cares about their patients. You know, we've got about 20% of our patients are all along the 285 corridor. We're driving up and down and up and down again in COVID changing clothes all the time. So as things start to um, change with COVID, our business did start to increase because the hospitals were releasing people and folks needed a nurse to come to their house and that would be Mount Evans. Well, folks, we are here live in mobile studio with Carrie Yeager and Betsy Hayes of Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice. And you can reach them at 303-674-6400 or shoot them an email to info at mtevans.org. Let's continue, uh, uh, Carrie, with your future vision for Mount Evans Home Health Care and Hospice and how you're planning on, for the future, caring for the community. Oh, thanks, Mark. So Mount Evans touches the lives of nearly 400 people every day. And it takes us a lot of, to accomplish this incredible, meaningful mission that we have. And so as, an, as a nonprofit healthcare agency, we face challenges of how to do more with less and to continue our mission to provide care to all regardless of their ability to pay. We're looking closely at healthcare and payment reforms and how they will affect us. And we know that they are coming. They are, some of them are already here and many sooner than we'd like. We need to be proactive in figuring out what models we can adopt that will ensure that we're here for another 40 years. So absolutely with Betsy's role as our development director is to really position Mount Evans from a fundraising um, perspective. And, and that's what we'll talk about with the gala is really to say, how do we care for all of our community regardless of the ability to pay. And it's so important for us to be able to walk into every home that needs us and not worry about that because we've got such great community support um, in order to fulfill our mission. Let's talk about something fun you've discovered about living and working up here in our mountain communities. What's fun from your perspective about being up here in the hills? You know, from my perspective, living over in Idaho Springs and working with many of the clinicians that live and reside over in the 285 corridor is just their unique relationship that the vast majority of our clinicians know who their neighbors are. So they know when they're walking in. I mean, we hear great stories and love of our clinicians that take care of people over the continuum. So 
someone may enter our home health program, need some rehabilitation after maybe a hip replacement or something like that. And then as the years go by, need some transition with our palliative care program. And ultimately, if we are honored to care for them at end of life during our hospice program. So our clinicians get to know the residents, their families, their kids, and just the loving stories that they share with me on a daily basis. And just some fun facts of like, I think it was about, it was probably two or three months ago where one of the clinicians had the best story of she was interviewing a patient and heard this clomping upstairs and here there was a horse had walked into the house and was eating apples off the kitchen table. So just some fun stuff that they really get comfortable with our clinicians and kind of all the inhibitions are down and, and you really get to see how people live and thrive in the mountains. And Betsy, this next question is very well positioned for you as uh, Mount Evans, I think, made the score of the century when they brought you over from the Evergreen Chamber. Betsy, what have you discovered that's important to the business community about Mount Evans and their support of uh, uh, your organization? Well, what is important to the business community is important to all of us, and that is the love and care for our residents. Our businesses would not be where they are today without our business, excuse me, without our community stepping up and making sure to support local throughout this pandemic. And the fact that Mount Evans supports those customers of the businesses, I mean, it's a win-win all around. Uh, we've got our fundraising event coming up. And when I talk to businesses and I say, I don't, you know, can, would you be able to donate even a little something? Or I just wanna make sure you know what's going on. They're like, oh, for Mount Evans, absolutely. Um, I present about Mount Evans at various business meetings because I want people to know what it is that we do. And I've heard all kinds of things. People, a, a realtor told me, oh, Mount Evans took care of my daughter when she needed special injections when she was 15. Oh, Mount Evans took care of my mother um, when she had a bad fall. Oh, Mount Evans, they do Camp Comfort, right? That's the grief camp for kids who lose uh, ages six to 12, who lose a loved one. Yes, that is Mount Evans. Um, I've heard so many like cool stories about how the businesses support the nonprofits, how the community supports the businesses. I mean, think about it. We are all in unincorporated Jefferson County. The way that nonprofits get started up here is because local residents, concerned citizens, decided that our community needed something, they got together and they made it happen for each other. That's what's so awesome about this community. Well, you've got something special coming up here soon and tell, the, uh, tell our listeners about your upcoming fundraiser, the birthday gala and a box benefit. Okay, will do. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yes, on Friday, February 26th, Mount Evans will be having their annual benefit gala. Um, every year we normally have a huge face-to-face -face gala with like 200 people over at Mount Vernon. We have a silent auction happening. We have stories about what Mount Evans does. And, you know, it's really a great time for everybody to get together. Uh, this year, of course, we cannot get together face-to-face. -to -face. And so what's happening is we are having, um, as I say, a TV show you don't want to miss. Um, it's virtual. We want folks to sign in. It'll be a combination of pre-recorded and live um, components telling the story of 40 years of Mount Evans serving this community. It will be sharing some patient stories and sharing stories about Camp Comfort. All of this will happen in a 90 minute window um, which on top of that, we'll be having a silent auction, which has a ton of really great things. So you can already preview it. We'll have a live auction. We have music from Tunisia. Tunisia is the band that always plays at our benefit. And when they found out we were going virtual, the band leader called me up and he said, Betsy, I've got some footage from a concert we did this summer that I'd really like to share with the folks at Mount Evans and use it for your event if you'd like to. And we are. So it's really cool. 
It's called Birthday Gala in a Box because if you pay $40 for the ticket for the event, you will get a box to set the stage of the party in your own home. There'll be a commemorative glass, bottle of commemorative wine from local Creekside sellers, a cupcake, and a ton of other little go goodies just to make your place festive. Um, I'm recommending that people order takeout from our local restaurants because our event starts at 5.30. And by the time you're done at seven, you're gonna wanna eat dinner. And wouldn't that be nice to have some of our businesses cook for you? So it'll be a win-win for the whole community. We already have 200 tickets sold, but because it's virtual, we can have a lot more to come. So thanks for asking about it, Mark. You know, it's gonna be a really exciting time for us at Mount Evans and for our community. And it's an opportunity for Mount Evans to showcase our high quality care, share the love and appreciation with our community who supports us. And the gifts we receive ensures that we're available to serve all residents who need our care and no one is ever turned away. So this is our big event for the year. Absolutely, Betsy's done an outstanding job putting these pieces together to celebrate, even though we'll all be remote, but to celebrate together. So I'm really looking forward to the fun we have at the end of February. Well, folks, as we close our discussion today, Carrie, Betsy, what encouragement do you have for our mountain community and for the future of Evergreen, Conifer, Bailey, and the U.S. Highway 285 corridor communities? Um, I would just say my advice is to make sure to stay involved with your community, stay involved with your businesses, and pay attention to what's going on, because all of us together make up the fabric of our mountain community. Care for your neighbors, check in on them, be involved and be a part of it because our organization, it's an honor to care for all of you that are listening today. That's what makes everything great. We're all together. We're in it together. We're stronger together. And we are sure coming out of this pandemic like nobody's business. This mountain community is going to the next level, I think, Mark. Carrie and you. You know, at Mount Evans, we're incredibly blessed to have a family of board members, volunteers, and donors who believe it's important to have a nonprofit independent healthcare provider serving the 285 corridor and the surrounding areas. And so we are truly blessed um, by this community to continue to provide care so that no one is ever turned away. And it's just a very, it's a privilege for me to be able to serve Mount Evans and our community, as well as our staff. Thanks, Mark. Well, on behalf of all of our mountain communities, we wanna recognize Carrie and Betsy today of Mount Evans Home Healthcare and Hospice for your continuing leadership of our local mountain fundraising efforts to provide in-home healthcare to our mountain community, regardless of the ability to pay. And as we wish you all the best with your continuing service to the community, once again, how can our listeners best get in touch with you? Well, they can go to our website, um, mountevans.org or mtevans.org. Both of those will get you there. You can give us a call at 303-674-6400 anytime. And one last shout out about our event, Mark from Conifer Radio. Thank you in advance for being our MC for the big night. It's our pleasure to partner with you and uh, partner with you on this radio podcast. Well, thank you, especially from a guy with a face for radio. <laughs> so we want, to, we want to thank you both, Carrie, and thank you, Betsy, for all, again, all you do and for taking part once again in today's uh, uh, broadcast of Conifer Podcast. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Betsy. Thanks, Mark. Talk to you soon.